Good afternoon everyone and welcome to episode 2 of the Free Motion Quilt Along. Uh, the block that we're going to look at today is called 12 Lanes of Terror. And uh, as I said, all of the blocks are named after places we went to or things that we did uh, in the States last year. And um, the 12 Lanes of Terror refers to uh, our experience of driving in Houston. We hired a minibus and um, drove our stock to and from the Houston Court Festival. And the driving was, um, shall we say, not within our limited experience of driving here in Australia. So many lanes and so much while driving, um, not by us. So uh, all the little channels in here represent the, the highway with the many, many lanes. This block is made of what I call a like a checkerboard design. So it has just a basic squares through the center, um, which is really a, a fill design. And then it has sort of these feathery flowers in each corner, which have got an echo around them. Um, what's nice about the fill in the center is there are lots of different options or different ways that you can fill it. And I'm gonna show you some of those uh, on this video. So to prepare the block, you can put as many lines on your uh, piece of fabric, your top fabric, as you feel you need to. So your work could be filled with lines going in either direction. You could actually mark out all of the squares. And you might especially do this if you were going to use your walking foot. Um, or if you don't have a ruler and you were just going to um, do your best to keep things straight, um, because most quilting rulers have got grading lines on them so that you can move um, out by a quarter of an inch, a half an inch, an inch, um, whatever your, your uh, square design uh, is. As I've said before, this is as much a challenge for me as hopefully it is for you. Um, so I have put as little lines as possible on mine. I have put a dot point uh, to the left and the right and the top and the bottom and they constitute those four corners of my outside square and from there I'm going to fill the lines in with my ruler so let's get to that bit first and I'm just going to line that back up I guess that does actually show you how easy it is to line your work back up again because I just have to make my ruler come down to this dot point and I know that that's going to be straight and kick off nice and slowly again, shouldn't have any little divots. Just pull the line along until you can see your dot point. Land in there and we're going to turn and head for the next one. So now I'm going to do the line straight through the center. Um, I'm going to start there and work my way from the middle out to one side and then back through the other way. Um, in this way, I can actually do these lines continuously. So rather than doing each line and then getting to the end and pulling my threads through and stopping and starting, um, the best idea is to try to find a way that you can continuously work around your design. So by putting this outside lot of stitching in, I can actually stitch in that as if it were a ditch stitch. Um, so that's where I'm going to be sort of traveling backwards and forwards and going into the next row. So I'll show you what I mean once I get this first line in. Okay, so to do my echo um, an inch away, I need to actually travel in this 
lot of previous stitching that I've done around the outside edge. So I'm just going to move myself along in that stitching. So you want to do this nice and carefully and slowly so that you don't end up with um, sort of double lines of stitching. You will end up with a bit of a shadow going on, um, a little bit of a darker effect, but that's to be expected when you've got two lots of, of thread in there. So, oh, well, just very luckily, I've lined myself up perfectly for the one inch spaces that I'm going to do. I've got a quarter inch and a quarter inch and a quarter inch. And of course, my extra quarter inch is coming from the edge of the foot to the needle. So I want to be on the three quarter line here plus my extra quarter. And then I'm going to push on through. So I'm not looking at the needle or the foot or anything. What I'm looking at is back here is that this line on the ruler lines up with my first line of stitching. And I can use that as my guide. Now again, when I get into this previous outside edge, I can move myself along, working towards that one corner very carefully and slowly. Um, now there's nothing to actually gauge at this point where I need to stop. It's just all guesswork. So you might stop there, line up the ruler. Oh, well, sorry, but I've done it perfectly again. I'm sure I'll make a mistake sometime soon. And this time we're going to head backwards. So I've got that line on that previous line that I've just done. And I'll move it on. stop in the outside line again. Let's see if I can not measure it right this time. Okay. So that is just shy of that third mark that I want. So what I need to do is I don't need to move my ruler back. I can just keep, take a couple of slow stitches down this row of stitching and that will move my ruler over and the ruler will just sit there quite happily around the foot while you do that. Okay, so I think that you can see what's going on here that I've got row after row of stitching and working my way back towards that corner. Right, I've worked my way right over into that corner now. I've done that last row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put myself right in the corner, just by carefully backtracking on that outside edge to get there. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way across to the other side and I'm gonna start backtracking another section and in that way I haven't actually gone up and down and moved my thread around at all I've been able to do the whole thing continuously Okay, so by using one corner to the other corner, I can now go back in and backtrack up and down through here. Um, when I get to one corner, I'll turn and go back the other way. So I should be able to stitch the entire design with needle up, needle down, threading at the very beginning and at the very end. So here we are at the corners and these are the flower uh, I guess they're a feathery design, but a little flower on the corners. Um, now it's up to you how much of you of this that you want to trace. If you're a total newbie, it might be an idea to trace the whole shape. Um, if you've done some feathers before and you're looking for a bit more of a challenge, you might like to trace just the end caps as I've done here of each one and their starting points. Um, so that you are really doing the rest of it by yourself. Um, it's always good to challenge your skills. So we're going to start 
down here and I'm going to do the first, the, the center one first. Then I'm going to come out and do the next petal and the end petal. And I'm going to work my way back, backtracking on this outer line and do the last two. Always a good idea to trace over it with your fingers because it, um, your pointer finger, it tends to get that muscle memory going, um, that brain and hand connection. So away we go. So I thought I'd just take this moment to show you how to pull your threads up to the top. Um, it's not completely necessary as we have a false back on these, but if you would like to get, it's a good practice to, um, to do when you're working on a regular quilt. So you're going to hold your top thread, you're going to lower your presser foot, you're going to rotate the needle so it goes down where you want it to go and back up all the way up. You're going to lift your presser foot again and then you're going to take the thread, okay, and you're just going to pull up that bobbin thread. You see it's just looped up here. Now if you scoop both threads away like that, you can pull up the bobbin thread nice and easily. Now you lower the presser foot and you just need to locate that point at which you came up and lower your needle ready for sewing. Now if you hang on to these threads when you kick off, you shouldn't get any loops forming underneath. Take a couple of stitches to anchor and then let go. Slow and steady. And back to the beginning. I'm going to backtrack over that line. So backtracking happens quite slowly because you want to try and get the needle in each of the stitches or in the stitches as you go along. Okay, I'm going to finish up there. What I'm going to do next is just do a little echo around the outside. Um, I think it just makes everything look neater. So kicking off with that little echo, just want to give it about an eighth of an inch, but it's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. These little bits in between there are your stopping points, so you can stop, readjust your hand. So I wouldn't try to do the whole thing in one go. And there we go back at the beginning. So in terms of what we do with our thread now, we can pull the machine out, pull the thread out, cut the thread off if I can find a pair of scissors. There we go. Cut the thread off. And if you give this top thread a little tug, you'll find that the bobbin thread pops up, the little loop pops up and you can just pull it through. Sometimes I'll just use a pin head or something like that to get it to come through. That way you're leaving your threads on the top of your work. Okay, so what I'll say about these flowers is there may be all four are going to look a little bit different and that's okay. When you look at the pattern later on, you're looking at the whole block. You're not going to be looking at the individual flowers. So don't get hung up if one of the lines is out of whack or one of the feathers isn't as perfect as you want it to be. So the last part of this block is the is filling in the checkerboard in the center. And you might actually decide that you don't want to fill yours in at all and that's perfectly okay. Um, I think the checkerboard looks nice and neat but if you want to fill it in I'm going to show you some different options, different ways that you might like to fill it in because the pattern on the um, sheet is just one design. There's so much more that you could possibly do. So what I've done is I've just drawn up a 
uh, a quick little sample of checkerboard, like a scrap. And this is probably a good idea to do until you decide what it is. Um, maybe you want to use it for practice or just decide which pattern it is that you want to put on your blocks. So make yourself up a quick little sample and then you can stitch in that and try out the different designs. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to do the one that's in the pattern, which is just backwards and forwards, looping around the bottom. And you can do it as tightly or as open as you want. Remembering that if you quilt tightly in one little square, the squares that you don't quilt next door are going to pop up. So you can see I'm not moving my hands all that much. I'm keeping everything nice and straight. And I'm just slowly moving them up and down. And once you get to the end of the block, you can use these lines to move around. So just as we did before, we use the outside edge to move around. I'm going to slowly move into the third block along and do the next one. So in this way, I'm not stopping and starting pulling up threads. I'm just using those, that checkerboard line that we've stitched in there already. That's my little highway to get around. Now another um, option here is to go back and to crisscross it the other way. So we'll just have a quick look at what that looks like. So it's just exactly the same thing. I'm trying to keep the distances fairly even. and forwards. If I come down one, so you can almost already see that these guys are puffing up a little bit because the area outside of them is quilted quite heavily. Um, let me see, so obviously there's like a lattice which comes out and scoots back in and out on the opposite side. So I'm going out mm, not quite a quarter of an inch. Okay, at that point, I'm gonna stop there so we can do some other things, but I'm gonna come back. And this is how it's done continually. Looking at little leaf shape. I'll just do a small bit of this so that you can see how it's done continually, continuously I should say. every single line wait until you've finished it because the end result can look amazing you might like to try just filling in each one with a lazy s shape like the letter s so starting at the top curving that way and bringing it back so it's a lazy s because it's only got a very flat curve Okay, then you're going to travel back to the corner and cross it. So it's kind of like it puts like a little curvy cross on top of each one. So that's nice and easy for beginners. Um, but the design that you end up with looks really, really cool. Let's see if I can do one backwards half, a bit of a challenge. you're getting the idea here. So the thing about grid designs is you got to try and work out how you're going to do them as continuously as possible without pulling up the thread all the time. 
and that's what all the little lines are for to help you move around. So there we go, it's another cool little option which doesn't take too much work. And obviously if you decide you're going to go with that, you would work from one corner all the way over and backwards. I'm just doing a small square to show you some options. Let's see what else we can come up with. Uh, what about a double double lattice design? So this is like the earlier lattice. But we actually go around it twice. So we're going to echo. I'm just going to do four squares so it doesn't take too long. It's a little bit um, more intense, I suppose, than the earlier version, but you get this lovely thread build-up that's happening there. Uh, let me see. Let's see what else we can come up with. Of course, this is all worth a good trip to Pinterest um, to get some inspiration before you start and do some drawing. Uh, draw it up on paper. That's a great way to practice these designs. So the last one I'm going to show you is one that you all have all been practicing from the ribbon candy drills and it's just a, a really loose uh, ribbon candy to fill in that space. So there you go, there's just some ideas of what you could fill in the grid design with. Um, it's entirely up to you, these blocks are your own. Uh, you've got three blocks to do, you might even like to make all three of them different if you're making the quilt, um, but it's all good practice. Uh, see you in episode three.